heart that they might find themselves living next to a 50 foot high apartment or office building or worse yet, a fast food drive through Barriers like fences do not make good neighbors. My personal opposition is because I do not want C2 in my backyard. With one property rezoned, I'm afraid the rest of the block will all tumble down the same slope. <clears throat> Would you like property zone C2 in your backyard? I think not. We, the residents, oppose rezoning because we do not choose to live next to a commercial space. because of noise and from trucks, snow clearing, all hours, and litter. C2 zoning could attract 24-hour business, increasing crime and vandalism, and excessive noise. As a healthcare professional, I've been a witness to much trauma when victims arrive at our hospital, victims of circumstance, Poor judgment, distracted driving. I would like to advocate for reduced speed zones, proper sidewalks, and turning lanes. I don't believe this intersection is ready for the future expansion and the increased traffic that this rezoning will bring. Not every commercial space is a good neighbor. Envision has been a good neighbor. But I do believe that rezoning the property at 80 Brand will open the gate to future rezoning along the whole block. And I don't want this in my backyard. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Anyone else wishing to object or have any questions? Okay. Excuse me. Well, I've been 72 rent. Thank you. Mr. Fry, I'll just, yeah, warn you that the microphone is there, so. Got it. So I don't know if um, a C2 des designation for this property is really far in excess of what they need. So I don't know if there was a clerical error or what happened here. But there is a category called uh, a residential mixed use uh, office slash office that would make sense to me. Um, for the purposes of ACL, we have no problem with ACL. We, we all agree with their stellar uh, reputation. Can't imagine why we'd want to object to that. It's just that I think C2 uh, really is far too broad. It, it opens up, <clears throat> uh, not for them, but, but for other, other properties and developers, it certainly does open up uh, other questions and possibilities. 76 Brant, for example, <coughs> where there was a home business that was operated uh, in violation of, of just about every home, home business rule that, that the city has, would certainly be interested in this, and they would have received a registered letter indicating this is happening. It certainly will have their attention, and if they apply, <coughs> uh, we would certainly object to that application uh, based on, on, on this uh, property's behavior and violation of the city's uh, uh, rules on home businesses. I mean, that, that was a real bad example. A bad precedent was set, was set and that same concern would, would apply to 80. If we go to C2, I mean, why not make it to C3, C4? I mean, uh, there, is a, there is an existing designation that's more appropriate and uh, that's what, what I would recommend that the city look at. Thank you. So just you are officially objecting to the official community plan change uh, to commercial? Re-80 Brent, yes. Re-80 Brent. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to object or have any questions? Mayor, councillors, my name is Karen Lowen, and I live at 68 Brad Street, and I've lived there 45 years. This presentation will register my concerns regarding the rezoning of 80 Brad Street, 
as well as the implied rezoning of the entire block to a commercial designation. And I want to highlight something that seems to be missing in the planning process regarding Brant Street, that the lives and properties of real people will be greatly affected by these proposals. Like many who have chosen to live in our neighborhood, my roots go deep in Steinbach, way back. My Quaker ancestors originally owned all the land we live on and are, that are in discussion tonight. More recently, when we built our house at 68 Brant Street, there was a wide open field to the west. Farmland, crickets, and sunsets. I care about the city. It's my home. We built our house the same year Highway 12 was twinned through Steinbach past our home. The town council of the day was encouraging Main Street business owners to build homes along this block of Brant Street. And so we did. And we were only a minute away from our own business on Main Street, which was very important to my husband. He much appreciated that. We raised our children in this house. We paid our taxes and invested a great deal into our neighborhood, striving to keep our, up our home and property to the benefit of neighborhood and city. Like everyone here, I have reasons for wanting to live where I do. I have a garden. Fancy that. And before I lose your attention, considering this to be very trivial, let me tell you, this is apparently, apparently not just any garden. I've been developing, developing this garden for 25 years, and it's considered to be exceptional by some. So much so, it was given a two-page spread in the free press several year, weeks ago. Did you notice? And just this week, I received an email from another Manitoba Horticultural Association or uh, organization wanting to organize a bus tour this summer to Steinbach to see my garden. These people will be spending money here as well. And I feel obliged to do this for my community, even knowing how much work it will be for me. What should I tell them? No tour? because I no, must now begin disassembling this garden, selling off the plants, some of which don't grow anywhere else in Manitoba, because I have to move. This is my story, and every one of us in this neighborhood has our own reason to want to live where we do. From the very north end of Steinbach, to the, which is now the new industrial park, driving through the city along Highway 12, through 10 traffic lights, to through the bottlenecks, past my house to the very south end. This is the only block where folks traveling through Steinbach are reminded that people actually live here. That Steinbach is not just only about commercial pursuit, but also has nice homes and beautiful landscapes with trees. A place where one could perhaps move to and retire to. This should be celebrated and encouraged rather than threatened with implied mention of rezoning to accommodate still more businesses which would forever change the flavor of our community and devalue our investments. We are real people who are concerned that already existing safety issues will be compounded by inevitable traffic increases if businesses are built on Brand Street, especially at the corner of Brand Street and Woodhaven slash Friesen Avenues. Living where I do, I have watched the traffic increasing steadily through the years, and there are now constantly trucks hauling snow, building supplies, year-round cement trucks, etc. Semis passing through, hauling livestock, monster bales, heavy tandem semis hauling Barkman products, bulk milk, bulk fuel, all mixed in with all the dozens of school buses and commuter traffic. Any red flags going up? And far too often, we hear the familiar sirens telling us that there's yet another accident at Brand Street in Woodhaven. We see the school children and seniors trying to maneuver across the highway on their way downtown or to the middle school and SRSS. And with the impending development of another senior's apartment block feeding onto Woodhaven, and still more uh, development at the far end of Woodhaven past the, the church, this problem must only increase. The safety of our children and seniors should be incorporated into all planning prior to any changes such as those proposed. I maneuver this corner every day, and I have experienced my own near misses 
because people take risks, they're in a big hurry. Far often, far too often, not knowing how to properly negotiate that corner and often causing dangerous bottlenecks. I've been involved with them, I've been caught in them. And the big truck traffic piling up behind me is, is, is nerve wracking, to say the least. Furthermore, rezoning the, this block of Brand Street so that businesses may situate here will create other issues. Those of us living here know that merging onto the highway from any driveway in this block is risky business, to say the least. We should learn from past mistakes made when council allowed home businesses here. And the resulting fiasco, failed businesses and ruined homes and yards, which had been a beautiful part of the neighborhood. Delivery trucks were parked on Brant and a no, park, a no park zone, creating dangerous traffic issues because they could not turn around in the available, in the available space. Has this been considered and planned for prior to wanting to change the zoning? We did not cause this, and we should not have to take the fall for it. Building businesses in this block will devalue existing properties on Brant Street as well as the Autumnwood homes backing onto Brant Street. We will have a permanently lighted backyard, and that's the one I can hardly bear to think about. Noise will increase and privacy will disappear. Environmental factors also seem to be completely ignored because undoubtedly trees will be taken down to make room. Lawn will be replaced with concrete, eliminating any permeable, remaining perme permeable surfaces for rainwater during downpours. Has this been planned for? I'm sure I don't need to remind anyone here already of the already existing flooding problems on Brand Street during rainstorms. Haul out the canoes, folks. This is what we face, and you should care, because we are real people. I urge Council to consider the very valid current concerns voiced here tonight and not to make premature changes, thus disregarding the, sa the safety and well-being of the people in our community and our beautiful city. Thank you for the opportunity to speak to this issue. Thank you, Ms. Lone. Are there any? Is there anyone else wishing to speak or have any questions? Okay, please take the podium. State your name and address. Uh, hi, I'm Art Petker. I live at 79 uh, Autumnwood, and I'm here to object to this rezoning and my. Uh, the, the, the evaluation on my house. Uh, I, we have lived there nine, nine years now. Uh, we have uh, we do a lot of walking, and uh, uh, we have been watching the traffic. The traffic is is getting to be, uh, I would say, uh, just about. Uh, uh, com uh, maximum capacity for uh, uh, for Bryant Street, uh, and um, well, uh, we walk across the highway. For the first few years we were there, it was quite easy to to cross the highway. Last year it was not. <coughs> uh, sometimes it was just. Had to wait too long to, uh, to uh, be because we didn't get the brakes anymore like we used to from from the lights. Uh, so th that's uh, so that's a problem. Uh, and uh, uh, you know, we are looking at adding some more uh, uh, traffic to to that to that highway and congestion. Uh, why would we want to do that if we want to, we, we should save uh, Brand Street uh, the way it is. Uh, well, if uh, we uh, um, run another five years, I would guess uh, that uh, I don't think that it would be bearable with, uh, with the lineups. Right now we have... Um, uh, two to three uh, stops before we get through the intersection. Uh, and uh, taking one mile now is, is 
minimum 15 minutes. Uh, and it could be uh, quite a bit longer for, for, each, uh, for each intersection that you have to cross. Uh, I think we have, have to address uh, the problem uh, with brands and somehow uh, uh, find a solution, uh, but we will have to find an alternate route, I think. Thank you. Just to clarify, uh, you said you objected to the zoning. Do you also object to the, uh, the official community plan change to commercial? That is what we're doing. That, that's also what we're doing. Rezoning? Discussing. Yeah. So there's the rezoning and the official community plan change. So there's two documents. And so, uh, but you said uh, you're objecting to the zoning. We just need to clarify if you're also objecting to the official community plan change to commercial as well. Uh, yes. Okay, yeah. thank you. Yeah. yeah, that's good. Anything further to add? Uh, no, that's it. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Please state your name and address. Brian Brunel and 107 Automotive <coughs> Drive. As well, I also own a commercial building at 90 Brandt. Uh, good evening, Your Worship, Honorable Council, uh, ladies and gentlemen, and neighbors. Uh, first of all, uh, I think that the most serious issue at hand is probably safety, and I think you've heard a lot of that, and I think everybody in this room would probably definitely agree to that. Uh, Woodhaven is a very, very busy intersection. Uh, I know myself being residing on the street and also owning a business just past that intersection where numerous vehicles are having to make U-turns to get into that development for uh, business purposes. Uh, there's been numerous accidents, uh, as said, uh, I think all the way from Main Street right up into to Mackenzie going down Brant is probably some of the highest accidents uh, within the city of Steinbach already. Um, Again, there's been seniors hit on, on, you know, motorized wheelchairs. There's a lack of, uh, you know, sidewalks for them to cross. They should be actually crossing at a safe, controlled intersection, which is way down by Tim Hortons. It's quite a long distance when it's minus 40. Um, so, and I'm not saying that that's a city problem because that's really a provincial problem. And, uh, but I think we're kind of putting the cart before the horse and we kind of need to address safety of all people as paramount. Um, with all due respect to Envision, I think everybody here applauds Envision. Uh, no one here is definitely against Envision, uh, but there is a large amount of uh, business owners here, developers that have numerous uh, vacant buildings right now that could be accommodated for that as well. Uh, we have a large Steinbeck Credit Union building that's sitting vacant on Main Street. So there is opportunities uh, as a business owner myself to, you know, I, I looked at a building for that for my own business. And I think, you know, maybe trying to get everything into one is probably probably a better suit. Um, again, safety is definitely the biggest issue. We've also got a lot of uh, residential homes on, on our street that have turned into rental properties. So we've got double, triple the traffic already going down Autumnwood Drive, and it's getting worse. So. That's something we also have to look at. We don't want to start losing our beautiful residential homes. Uh, when people drive through Steinbach, whether they're from, from Steinbach or not, if they're from Winnipeg or outside, you drive down Brant, there's gorgeous homes down there. We don't want to lose that. Uh, that definitely says something for our city, and, and uh, let's not take that away from the people that live in those homes. All right. Thank and you. I'm opposed to both as well. Thank you. Very good. Thank you very much. Is there anyone else wishing to object or have any questions? <coughs> Hi there. All right. Please state uh, your Gary name. Gary Clausen, 80 Adam. Brant Street. Thank you. Um, thanks for this opportunity today. And uh, I have sat on numerous boards, school division for 25 years, and part of our job was envisioning the future, using the term. And I think that's what we have to do here. We have to look five years down the road, and maybe longer, and seeing what Highway 12 actually really is going to become when this city becomes the, uh, the city that is 25, 30, 40,000 people. But we have to start somewhere. I've been neighbors with them for almost 20 years in vision, been fabulous neighbors. 
as they mentioned, evenings and weekends we notice absolutely nothing, and during the week we know not, nothing either. Never been a problem parking. The Woodhaven access uh, is fabulous. It's there. It makes sense. It's a perfect fit, and it complements their property. It it uh, and and as the owner of the property, yes, I would say that. But I'm if you look at the property, it's quite obvious. Uh, that it's and I'm, and I'm not only saying that because of the office that was established by Seine River. I think it's diversion across the road. Uh, this is a a good fit, and with concerns about my treed yard, I one of the most treed yards along the entire strip on that side. Uh, your staff member Russ Dick was just visiting us last night, and we will have three of the largest elm trees on that strip removed in February due to Dutch elm disease and times are changing and there will be a lot of trees coming down at that corner we enjoyed our time there and we enjoyed those trees we didn't necessarily like the news but that is a fact I thought I'd add, give you as added information which you some of you may not have known but three big big elm trees are coming down there may be more coming down next year I don't know but again thanks for this opportunity to meet with you and my neighbors and I uh, love the neighborhood, and I love my neighbors as well, and that includes Envision, and I hope everything works out. Thank you. So I support the, the uh, rezoning, both bylaws. Thank you. Thank you. Anyone else wishing to object or have any questions? Anyone else wish, wishing to object or have any questions? All right, seeing none. Does the applicant wish to respond to any of the comments today? It's up to you. Or, sorry, just wait, just wait. Would you like to make a comment uh, yes. before the applicant? Was our, was our yeah, I understand that. So please, uh, please, uh, please state your name and your address. Good evening. My name is Ross Jardine, and my address is 85 Automobile Drive. Uh, I object to the rezoning uh, based on the implication or the implied statements by members of this council, uh, that rezoning and commercialization will follow along Brant Street from Woodlawn to Ellis. Uh, I've spoken with three real estate agents here in Steinbach over the last couple of days and posed the question, should the property which is 76 uh, right next door and backs on a, directly onto my backyard, if 80 gets rezoned and other properties then get rezoned in the future, be it three, five, ten years down the road, how will that affect my property values backing onto that commercial property? And the estimate was $30,000 dropped. Uh, I will remind council, as the earlier gentleman did, there is an abundance of commercially zoned property available throughout Steinbach, both for lease, rent, and lots to rebuild. I asked the representative from Envision, has Envision considered putting a second floor on their, existi their existing building? I might look into that and get some engineering done. Solves the problem. There's your office space. Very good. Just a question. You've uh, said you're uh, opposed to rezoning. This is also for the official community plan change. And so I you... oppose that as well. Thank you. Very good. Anything further to add? No. Thank you for your time. Thank you. You have a question Chris, to admit it. I have a city manager, but it may go to uh, the applicant as well. So okay. So it might be time. But okay. Go ahead. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. We, the question is in regards to we've heard like a number of concerns expressed in terms of rezoning to commercial. Uh, the concerns that I'm hearing are not in regards to the particular use that Envision wants to use, but rather with the fact that this property would be long-term commercial and could change in the future. My question to Mr. Warkington and perhaps to the applicant, depending on the answer, is that why is there not the option of the residential mixed use or it stays residential and there's a variance that gets tied to this one particular use? Because I admit I'm a little puzzled too as, at the fact that it has to be specifically a commercial zoning and specifically C2. Is there not another category that is residential that since it would be basically just office space and no one opposes a little bit of office space for Envision. Mr. Warkentine. Uh I'll respond to the comment about the uh, residential mixed use. 
Uh, my understanding, without referring to the zoning bylaw, is that uh, that particular zoning category requires uh, both a residential and commercial component. Uh, the intent, as I understand uh, the application, is it would be a conversion to commercial use in its entirety. Uh, that would then negate the uh, ability of RMX to uh, be able to fulfill their uh, intent. Just to follow up on that, Go ahead. I know that there have been times, a number of times, where we've had a commercial property where we've granted a variance to allow a res just residential to go there. Is it not possible to grant a variance that would allow just this one particular commercial use, which is just the office space, to go on, for example, residential mixed use? Is that possible? Um, if I understand your question correctly, uh, I believe you may be referring to uh, properties that the city uh, has designated as C1 uh, zoning right. uh, within the uh, central business district or transitional zone, yep. where there have been occasions from time to time requesting a residential use within that C1 zone. Uh, that is a permitted uh, option. Uh, however, because commercial uh, use is seen as a more intensive use, uh, the reverse does not uh, apply with a residential zoning, especially with the RSF zoning that is presently uh, at 80 Brand Street. One, one final follow-up, because right. it's directly on the point here, and then that's it for, for now. Uh, is there any possible way for this property to become basically what Envision is proposing, and it be guaranteed it can't go to anything else commercial? Is there any possible way, any zoning category, any variation thing, is there any possible way that Envision could get the property essentially as they're proposing here, but it not change to any other commercial use? Is that at all possible? Uh, not to my knowledge with the way the city zoning bylaw and, and uh, the uh, provincial laws are written. Okay. Thank you. Councillor Panner, please. Through you to administration. Thank you. Um, we recently approved a St. Rat River Conservation District to open up an office on Friesen, I believe. Correct. I don't recall um, having to make changes to the official community plan to do that. I'm just wondering what's the difference between that when they have their offices in a home? Um, but from my recollection, we didn't have to make changes there. Uh, correct. Uh, the zoning for that particular property is in fact C1. However, it does have a residential designation as far as the official community plan. So what, we can't do this as a C, like do the same thing to this property? Correct. It is zoned different. In the official community plan, it is, it is designated differently. Any other, uh, the applicant does need to make her final uh, statement. Uh, any other questions to administration? Uh, we can also have a questions after we close the public hearing. Are we comfortable moving forward at this time? I'll ask for the final statement, please. You know, so one issue that we can't really ease concerns about is what happens to the future with the rest of the street. Um, I do appreciate the support we experience from neighbors and that there isn't necessarily opposition to uh, us. Um, there was a question about whether we could just build a second floor on our existing building. Um, the existing building is, doesn't have that structure. Um, if you have, if you've been inside the building, you realize that the tall, large windows is a cubicle world, and so it presents uh, a whole lot of issues. At, it, that's not possible. We have looked at uh, numerous other properties. We are too big for most properties and not big enough for properties like the old SCU building. And so we're a unique size for the city of Steinbach. And uh, so that uh, poses a problem there. Our current building at 84 Brandt is actually zoned C3, not C2 or C1. So we already have C3 right next door. Um, and our intention would be to build a building that fits in the neighborhood. But I can't speak to what council would do with the rest of the street in the future. Thank you. I'll now close the public hearing in regards to the official community plan. 
we will again have another public hearing in regards to the zoning specifically. I know we've kind of covered off both and, and not, we won't be asking people to necessarily repeat what they've said, but uh, we will now move to a council decision on the official community plan. Council, how would you like to proceed? Councillor Siemens. Uh, motion to deny the application. Thank you. Is there a seconder? Councillor Penner, go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. This is uh, the use that we've talked about here is uh, one that I can appreciate and I would approve of. I think it would be a, uh, a move that the neighborhood would appreciate having the office there. And uh, I think everything would go well because they have been proven to be good neighbors in, in that environment. But the decision here is, is a long-term decision. And to uh, change it to uh, the community plan now uh, would then offer an opportunity to continue to change it. The, I believe the city is reviewing its community plan in 2018. And uh, when we do review it, it's for a five-year period. So I would like the city to have the opportunity to discuss that on, on that basis, not at a single council meeting on how to, um, to move forward with it. And the city needs to review the whole area, not just a single property. And so with the, with the review coming out of our community plan in 2018, I think that we need to hold off on this decision and uh, deny this decision and uh, understand what other opportunities there are. But uh, I, I appreciate all the different comments about Brand Street, about the residences there, those are some of the, the residents that I remember uh, in this community that have really been a focus. But we need to stop and rethink this as a whole and take the time to do that and go through that process and not do it just at a single council meeting. Thank you. Councillor Penner. Thank you. Um, I will speak to the, um, the re redesignation um, to commercial and I would like to speak to it as a whole. I, I agree with uh, Councillor Siemens and some of the comments he made about looking at this with a view to the, the entire uh, area, not just piecemeal. Uh, good planning requires us to look at the entire area and see how, what best works for that area. And good planning means um, looking at it in a thoughtful manner, not a reactionary manner. So to that effect, and considering that um, this is um, an important area, I think, for the city as well, I agree with some of the comments made about going down Grand Street and not only seeing commercial entities or fast food restaurants or stores, but also seeing some beautiful homes that highlight uh, the pride we have in our community. I agree with those comments. I think they're, they're worthwhile and they should be taken into consideration. But what we're dealing with here is a redesignation from uh, residential to commercial, and commercial itself is a huge, huge change. And I'm not prepared to support that. Thank you. Is there anyone else? Councillor uh, Swagstra. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. This is a challenging one, and the reason it's challenging is that we have two major questions really before us, or two issues. One issue is uh, the particular use that uh, is proposed to this property, which is the Envision Community Living Office Building. That's a, I've not heard any concerns in terms of that particular use. Uh, and then the second issue is the abstract question of should this be residential or should it be commercial? Two separate issues. And the problem is that, and, I, and I've sort of expressed it already, is I really like the particular use, I th I, and I haven't heard any objections to the idea of Envision having this as office space. They are great neighbors, it's a great organization, it makes sense. Uh, but lots of concerns regarding the abstract rezoning because of the long-term implications it has for the street and the impact of the neighborhood if the property use would ever change, because obviously we can't control what is going to happen there in the future. And so those are the two, those are the two things. And, there is no way under the current bylaws from the information that we have uh, to allow the particular use without changing the abstract rezoning. And so the question that has to be before us, particularly when looking at an official community plan, is we have to ask ourselves in the abstract, when I look at this area, when I consider the neighborhood as a whole, does it make sense to change it from residential to commercial? That is what we have to consider as opposed to the one particular use that would go there in the immediate future. Because of that, uh, I will vote for the motion to deny. Uh, I think that uh, that, it, that uh, the area should remain designated residential. We've heard loud and clear from, uh, from much of the neighborhood in terms of the concerns. We have to take that into consideration. That's why we have public hearings. And we hear that there's a strong desire for that section to remain uh, 
commercial, or sorry, to remain residential. We know that that entire section alone there is currently residential, and it's kind of obvious what the precedent would be if that's re if that is redesignated uh, commercial in the official community plan, and then and then rezoned as well. So I really like the particular use, no problem. I haven't heard any of the neighbors express concerns about the particular use, but because there's no way to do that under the current rules. Um, I will vote to deny uh, because uh, it should stay, the area should stay residential in its nature. Further discussion, Councillor, uh, <coughs> Councillor Fair, please. Uh, yes, Mr. Mayor, I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not so sure. I think all the objections that we've heard were uh, 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 not in favor of reviewing the official community plan for that area. They all objected to that going to that, that road. One thing I'm not, that I'm not entirely clear of yet is the uh, the C1 designation that's across the street and why that couldn't be designated for this property. If this property could be C1 and could be designated as office space, we wouldn't, we can look at the official community pl plan. I just don't think that, that that's where the neighbors would favor that from what I see here today. So, so I'm not so sure whether uh, a C1, if, if, maybe I just need some more clarification on that. Just to be clear, Councillor Fair, this is about the official community plan changing. For it to be C1, it, the official community plan would still have to change. But then we could maybe just address this property instead of the whole thing. But what we're dealing with, though, is the official community plan, and it must, the official community plan, the designation must, must change, whether it's C1, C2, or any other C. So, so in the end, we still have to go through this process, yeah. Anything further to add? No. Okay. Anything further from council? Anything in anything in closing? Uh, a few comments. I think uh, again, I appreciate the the, the comments uh, from other councillors. It is a long term impact that we need to uh, keep in mind, and that we will be reviewing it. And I am the one councillor here, if I make right, to uh, do back onto. I have a C2 in my backyard. And besides the snow removal at 3 in the morning and uh, the bright lights from the automobile dealership, it's a wonderful neighbor. So it does work. And, uh, but, uh, <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> All right. Anyway, okay, continue on. <laughs> Is that it? <laughs> that should be it. Okay. All right, Council. Uh, I've heard uh, clearly, uh, we've had a good discussion here today. I think we can hear clearly, and I think there can be a consensus that number one, uh, we think Envision is an important piece of our community, that Envision does a great work in our community, and there isn't objection to what Envision is doing at all, or even their plans. What, but what we do here have to deal with as a council is the changing of our official community plan from residential to commercial. And that doesn't put a name on it. It doesn't say who can be there. It simply says that that will now, from now on, be commercial. Uh, we as a council periodically do go through our official community plan. And there was a very good reason why we kept this area a few years back as a residential area. And those reasons still exist today, as we heard from the neighborhood. So I will uh, also vote to approve uh, or to, uh, uh, along with uh, Councillor Siemens' resolution. Call for the question. All those in favor of denying. Thank you. All right. Uh, the the uh, official community plan change is denied. Mr. Workentine, then we do not need to go through the uh, rezoning uh, hearing. Is that correct? That is correct. Thank you. So we will not go through a rezoning hearing because the official community plan uh, change is denied. And we'll proceed with the other parts of this meeting. So thank you all. You can gladly stick around for all the rest if you'd like. <laughs> but you don't have to. Council, we will now move, boy, it's getting worse here. Yeah. We will now move to 6C, variation V, 2017-26, 260 Park Road West. I will close the council meeting and open the public hearing. Mr. Warkentine. 
Uh, Mr. Mayor, members of council, this is an application for variance file V-2017-26 for a property with civic address of 260 Park Road West. Owner of the property is 4191994 Canada LTD. The, the applicant for the variance is uh, Oliver Coop. The purpose of the application is uh, the applicant is requesting council to waive the requirement to hard surface the parking area of the subject property whereas City of Steinbeck zoning bylaw requires the owner to hard surface the required parking of the use. Uh, notices pursuant to the Planning Act have been issued. There is no written correspondence on file. Thank uh, you. Respect. Go ahead. Go ahead. With respect to the uh, application, um, the uh, background is provided in the, in the package. Um, as far as uh, the uh, required parking as provided uh, in, uh, in the documentation or the information that's provided, uh, the uh, required parking and related aisle development is provided for in Table 4 or 5 of the City, City of Steinbeck Zoning by Law 2055 uh, with respect to the application for variance. Uh, the recommendation from administration is that it be denied. Thank you. Is the applicant here today? Thank you. If you could take uh, the, please state your name and address and proceed. Uh, hi, my name is Oliver Kopp, actually, uh, it's KOPP, and I live at 414 Centre Ave in Blumenort. Uh, I am part owner and general manager of the rental house, which is on 260 Park Road West. Um, we are currently located on a gravel road. Um, and we have a gravel parking lot that matches that gravel road. Um, we currently have paved stalls for enough customers to access our business. Um, our majority of our clientele come from either construction or agriculture based locations. Um, therefore, they are already coming from a dirty surface coming onto a gravel road and then coming onto our parking lot. Um, we feel because of that gravel road um, that at this time we request that our parking lot does not have to remain or does not need to be changed into pavement. Um, we do have a shared driveway as well with a company that deals with mostly semi-traffic. Um, they completed their construction last year. They were not required to pave their parking lot. Um, we are a little um, confused in general why are we are now doing a renovation to our building, why we are required to now pave our parking lot when we only finished our building two years ago and we were not required at that time. Um, we feel, yeah, sorry, that's probably about it. Uh, we also feel that if, if and when that road does get paved, we are definitely willing and open to paving that parking lot at that time as well. Okay, thank you. There may be questions for you, sure. but uh, before that, there's just going to be some clarification from uh, the uh, administration. Mr. Workentine, uh, there was a statement made uh, by the applicant that uh, two years ago when they built that they weren't required to have parking installed. Can you clarify that? Uh, <clears throat> yes, according to information that I have, the uh, application for permit was issued December of 2014 uh, with a subsequent uh, lot grading and servicing plan which was required was submitted by the owner at the time of development showing that the required parking in the parking aisle that was to be hard surfaced. Uh, these plans as far as the uh, lot development were approved by the city uh, in November of 2015 and to date that work remains incomplete. All right, so that was a requirement in the original uh, and, it, and it wasn't complete, is that what you're saying? That's correct. Okay, thank you. It's just to clarify what, okay. uh, yeah, thank you. Anyone here just uh, wait? For the applicant? Yes. Okay. If we can just do the objections first and then we'll do uh, the applicant. Is there anyone here wishing to object or have any questions? Anyone here wishing to object or have any questions? Seeing none, go ahead. Uh, thank you, Mr. Mayor. This just follows up on the city manager's comments. So uh, this is not a before the fact request. This is like sort of, this is an after the fact. You have the property developed in terms of your business. And if you were required in the development agreement to pay and it was signed accordingly and agreed to, what's the, why would you sign that and agree to pave it as, as a condition of approval by the city? Um, to, we were not informed that it was a requirement. It was put onto the plans um, and submitted 
we have not um, we have not been made aware by anybody to date that we actually need to finish and complete paving the parking lot according to the original plans. We've gotten our permanent occupation or yeah occupation certificate, all that stuff without any mention of a parking lot. Um, so it may have, yes, it may have been included in our original plans to one day surface the parking lot, although we had never put onus on doing it at time of building. Thank you. That brings us to another question for the administration. Mr. Workentine, uh, are there any outstanding work orders that they were made aware of uh, with this, uh, with this uh, project? Uh, not having uh, any record of a particular outstanding work order on the file, uh, I can't say for certain. Uh, however, in Council's uh, information package, there is a copy of a letter dated November 30th, 2015 to MMM Group, uh, with uh, also with a CC copy to the rental house with respect to uh, identifying the requirement for the site grading and services plan, which included the hard surfacing of the parking lot. Uh, which was provided to the engineer acting on behalf of the applicant. Okay. Thank you. Uh, however, I would expect that uh, uh, I do believe that an outstanding work order uh, is, is presently on file. Okay. Thank you. Mr. Uh, Fair. Uh, I guess, Mr. Mayor, uh, I've got a question for administration. Uh, is this something that we can rule on, seeing it was uh, an open work order that wasn't completed if we if we if we let's say we said okay we're, we're going to uh, um, uh, accept the variance and, and uh, allow him to to build uh, uh, you know onto his building without uh, ash putting asphalt down can we even do that with an outstanding work order how, how do we deal with the outstanding work order? I guess that's the question Uh, my suggestion would be uh, that uh, council can choose to uh, vary uh, applications for uh, or approve applications for variances if they so choose. Uh, however, as far as background on the uh, the file, uh, based on the information that was here, uh, the applicant uh, did indicate that uh, the uh, development of the parking lot and the, uh, and the aisleways uh, was to proceed. Uh, administration proceeds on that basis to administer the permit uh, based on, uh, on the status of the, uh, of the particular property. Uh, there is, in fact, uh, an outstanding work order on that property. Uh, it has been provided interim occupan occupancy rather than final because uh, according to our records, the, uh, the file itself, as far as the construction and development of the site, is still incomplete. Thank you. Further, discuss, further questions? Uh, yeah, further to that. Uh, so if we pass a variance today, does he get a full-time uh, occupancy then, or is he still operating with temporary? Administration would have to proceed uh, as if the variance would have been approved prior to the actual development of the site. Uh, however, I would uh, pose the question to uh, uh, or, or the issue to council as to uh, if uh, if it feels it is appropriate whether or not to approve variances that uh, are applied for well after the fact. And if that is appropriate, uh, 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 appropriate mode of development within the city of Steinbach. Thank you. Further questions for the applicant? Any final statements? Uh, sure. I do apologize, of course, as I was not made aware of the fact that there was an open work order on the parking lot. I was under the impression that we had gotten our full occupancy as this was left up to our general contractor, and I had not heard anything in the last well, since we've moved in. Um, so my sincerest apologies, as if I was aware of this, I probably would not have pursued this route. Um, with that being said, had I, or had I known that it was a requirement to pave our parking lot while being on a unpaved road, of course I would have applied for this variance on our initial build. Um, so please accept my sincerest apologies, as I was unaware. 
Um, I should be made aware before I come to things like this, so once again, my apologies. Um, my request still stands. Um, we believe firmly that because of our location, because we're on a gravel road, because of our main industry that we deal with, at this time it doesn't make sense to pave our lot. Um, so I appreciate your time and thank you. Okay, thank you. We'll close the public hearing, open the council meeting. Council have any questions or how would you like to proceed? Council Penner. I move to approve. Move to approve. Is there a seconder? Councilor Fair, go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. In general, um, this is the first time this issue is coming up where um, businesses that are on gravel, or that are on gravel roads, um, are coming and questioning the rationale between us requiring them to pave their parking lots. To me, it doesn't make sense when um, for gravel road, for business on a gravel road to have to pave. The gravel gets onto the driveway, it ends up being quite messy. Paving in asphalt is very expensive. And uh, I think if roads are paved, absolutely, uh, businesses should have paved parking lots. But in terms of being on a gravel access, I don't agree. And I think it's a bigger issue that council needs to talk about it. This is inc increasingly becoming an issue and I suspect it will more so now with the annexation and we have even more land that has gravel. So I uh, support the variance, but I also would ask that we would like further look at this more formally. Thank you, Councilor Fair. Yes, Mr. Mayor, I agree with the, the comments that have been made. I, I have a business on a gravel road and I hate to think of what it would look like I asphalt in my yard and the gravel, people drive down the gravel road because I know what my garage looks like when I get done. And, uh, and I, I know that business looks that way. One thing that I do that, that is a little disconcerting for me is that I think that we, as a city, we may, maybe we need to find ways that where there's open work orders that we let the people know that there's a, an open work order because I've had that, that exactly happen to me as well. So I don't know if there's a way that we could. Uh, have a trigger where if there's an open work order that you get a reminder that this is not completed yet and you're on a temporary permit, but if two years later you still don't know, then and I don't know, maybe there, maybe there is a way, but uh, uh, I, I think that maybe we can tighten things up that way a little bit. Thank you. For the discussion, Councillor Swagstra. Uh, Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I would speak against the variance request. The um, it, it seems like we have sort of the classic uh, situation here of the and to put it bluntly, sort of the, the, the ignorance is the excuse. I mean, we have a situation where, you know, with all due respect, where someone d didn't, uh, wasn't aware, didn't read the zoning bylaw, didn't get notified by the, whoever the contractor is, I don't know. But the city does document things. The city does send out notices. Our staff do know what they're doing. They do send out information. And it is unfortunate that somewhere along the way, on the other end, that, uh, that, that some things were apparently not communicated. What we have before us, I, I don't disagree with the fact that, uh, that perhaps we need to sort of take a look at some of the implications of the zoning bylaw and, and, and look at the gravel road and, uh, and the parking lot being paved issue. I have no issue with looking at that. It is a long-term issue that we should address, we should look at. We're going to be looking at our zoning bylaw. The worst possible place I can imagine looking at it would be, well, right now, when we're dealing with an after-the-fact variance request, where we have a situation where we have a property that has been built, where, had, where plans had been submitted that, according to our city manager's report, the lot grading and servicing plan submitted by the owner at the time of development showed the required parking on the parking aisle that was to be hard surfaced. These plans were approved on that basis by the city in November 2015. That is the legal requirement. We, when we approve things in council, we make a big deal about the fact that we're going to make people sign a development agreement. The development agreement is what guarantees that city standards are going to be enforced. Every time we grant one of those rezonings and those variance requests and we put conditions on it, we always assure people it's going in the development agreement. That's how we make sure that people are going to comply and this is going to go along there. This is a development agreement. If we vary this, if we say, well, it's in the development agreement, but after the development agreement has been signed, two years after the fact, 
Now we're going to now we're going to change it. We have just opened up a floodgate, not just for applications where everyone who has been is is in anything like this type of situation automatically is going to get a variance like this, and I don't. There could be some implications there, but anyone else that doesn't like their development agreement or isn't aware of something in their development agreement, and now there's the possibility that that agreement that they agreed to and they signed at the time, now we're going to loosen that and we're going to change that, and it could be as too much, as much as two years after the fact. So. We need to think long term. I'm not opposed to looking at the zoning by, by long, revisiting this question on a broader policy basis. But if we approve this, not only are we changing that policy after the fact right here, we are undermining our staff, our development agreement process, and we're sending the message that every time we promise people it's going to be in the development to guarantee, agreement to guarantee that fence, to guarantee those trees, and then they don't go in, well, no, now I'm going to come two years later to council and ask for one later. So with all due respect, I have to uh, vote against this variance. Thank you for the discussion. Councilor Funk. <clears throat> I've, uh, I've actually gone to this business and I've, I've uh, read the tools off of them. And in this application, I, I agree with Councillor Swagstra. We need to look at this better. We need to have a better plan for gravel-based uh, roads and their parking lots that are adjacent to them. But in a case like this, I do believe that this company has adequate asphalt for the, the, the type of business they are. The, the, the customers get to park on asphalt, but as you bring your tool back, and you do, it, you do use it in a very dirty form, you get, to, you get to drive on a gravel road or a gravel parking lot, and you don't leave dirt for the, for the, for the clean customer that's coming in afterward, after you. And I think that this is, in this application, I'm okay with it. And I think that we take these variances on a case-by-case -case basis, and for that reason, I'm good with this. Thank you. Further discussion? Anything in closing? I appreciate Councillor Swagstra's passionate remarks. Um, however, I, when I uh, became a city councillor, I thought I knew a bit about city politics and city administration and those types of things. Um, and I've been on council for seven years. And I'm still learning new things all the time. And so um, I think to a certain degree, we have to take in good faith what the applicant is saying. Maybe that he genuinely didn't know. It was an apology. Maybe he did, maybe he didn't. I can't say for sure. But I don't expect everybody putting, putting up a business uh, that they will know the ins and outs and exactly how things go and are applied, especially if it's a one-off business. This is like this tenth time coming back to council, or even fifth time. Well, then maybe we've got, you know, need to reconsider. But I think in good faith, uh, we should take his apology and his comments sincerely. As well, um, I genuinely believe that it doesn't make sense to have paved parking on a gravel road, and there's significant gravel um, on that road from where it's paved on Park Road going further towards uh, Highway 12. So. Yeah, those are my closing comments. Thank you. Council, obviously uh, this is one of those scenarios where we're dealing with something that uh, has already occurred and then they actually want to expand is my understanding. Uh, the reality is is that we do have uh, development agreements for a very good reason. Uh, we do hold people to them and when they come for applications we remind them if there's an outstanding work order. That seems to be the case this time around and now we have uh, uh, someone want, wanting to not fulfill that development agreement. And so uh, I will not vote in favor of this. Call for the question. All those in favor? Opposed? Carried. Thank you. All right. We will now move to the report and recommendation of the city manager, and that is 8A. This is the Steinbeck Fly and Golf Course land purchase. This is on pay, uh, sorry, they, this is uh, additional information that has, has followed. Mr. Workin team. Mr. Mayor, members of council, there, uh, as you mentioned, there was uh, supplementary information provided to you uh, as of yesterday with respect to uh, a proposal that was uh, initially <clears throat> 
reviewed between the City of Steinbeck and uh, Steinbeck Fly and Golf Club, Inc. Uh, there are two separate items identified on the Council agenda. Uh, however, due to uh, the fact that uh, the two matters are uh, related, uh, it is best that uh, both the matters, the uh, pending purchase and the uh, pot uh, potential lease, uh, be dealt with concurrently. Uh, but uh, the proposal is to consider the purchase of 40 acres of land uh, from the Steinbeck Fly and Golf Club, Inc., uh, which is currently used as the golf course. Uh, this uh, particular land uh, is immediately south of an existing 40-acre parcel uh, that uh, is currently owned by the City of Steinbeck and leased to the Steinbeck Fly and Golf Course. Uh, with the uh, purchase price uh, being $500,000 uh, and provisions as provided in the offer to purchase uh, with a possession date of March the 1st, 2018. Uh, as a related item, uh, there is also a memorandum of lease document that is attached uh, that also uh, provides the uh, terms and conditions uh, of the proposed uh, lease back uh, from the city to the Steinbeck Fly and Golf Club. Uh, for a period of uh, approximately 63 years uh, to uh, expire at approximately 2083. Again, similar to uh, the terms of the existing lease document as the current 40-acre parcel. Uh, recommendation from administration is that uh, Council approve. Thank you. Uh, how would Council like to proceed? Councilor Fair. I'll move to approve the purchase. Thank you. Is there a seconder? Second. Councilor Siemens. Go ahead, Councillor Fair. Uh, yes, Mr. Mayor. Uh, the way that I see this, uh, we're uh, we're buying uh, 40 acres. The uh, it's an investment for the future of our city. <clears throat> we purchase land all the time when we believe we need a piece of property for the future development of our city. And the price is reasonable; we buy it. The leadership of the flying came to the city uh, some council some time ago and asked us for a grant. This is not an unusual occurrence for us. We get grant requests all the time. We declined their request because we're not interested in providing them a grant as we do on a regular basis. We're typically not interested in providing operating grants. It is no secret that the flying and golf courses in general have been struggling over the last several years. A while, anyway, a while later, the, the golf course approached us to see if we would be interested in buying uh, further 40 acres, seeing the city already owns the 40 acres fronting Park Road East. This makes much sense for the city. This would give us a very nice parcel of land in a great part of the city. They told us that they were willing to sell it to us for 500000 which is much less than what the land is actually valued at. I believe this piece of property is probably worth upwards of a million dollars, but seeing it as landlocked, it has more value to us than most investors because they would need to require more property to have access, which we already have. We have examples of much smaller parcels in the city selling for much more money. So we have an annual budget of $300,000 to acquire land in areas where we have an interest in development, and I believe this falls very nicely into that category. With a budget of $300,000, we would be using slightly more than half the budget per year for the next three years, like 167000 a year. This would still not handcuff us entirely in the event a property in the downtown area becomes available. I believe the city's urgency uh, to acquire more land in the downtown area is somewhat lessened by the fact that we already own a significant amount of those properties. So I believe it is in the best interest of the city to purchase this parcel of land and seeing we already have this, uh, a budget line for this, it will cost the taxpayers no extra money. Thank you. Further discussion, Councillor Siemens. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. This isn't the first time that the City of Steinbeck and the Flying Golf Course have uh, been involved in uh, various ways in, in a financial way. The original nine holes uh, of the golf course uh, were open for play in 1970, and the, in 1980s, they expanded to 18 holes. Both of these projects were funded by community builders, each investing upwards of $10,000 to make it happen. The City of Steinbeck was involved in the 1980s uh, by leasing 40 acres, uh, as previously stated, to the golf club. The golf club has contributed financially to Steinbeck in various ways. They paid upwards of $25,000 towards paving of the pool parking lot, of which they get half of the use, and over $40,000 towards the paving of Park Road. They've also paid uh, $25,000 plus tax bill each year on properties they own, as well as the property they lease from the City of Steinbeck. 
They have invested over $675,000 in flood mitigation due to, in some cases, residential construction rerouting of creeks on the east side of Steinbeck due to housing uh, contracts going in. The Flying Golf Course contributes annually to an estimated $2 million to the local economy through direct operations plus an economic boost for, through other businesses in Steinbeck due to visitors to the golf course. It is part of the health and wellness that we can offer as a community. It's part of the fabric of who we are and has been for over 63 years. A value asset to the recreation in our community and the majority of what they have done is private dollars and their asks over the years have been very few. I believe that the ask that uh, the city pro uh, purchase these 40 acres is good for the golf course as it will hopefully help them become financially viable once again. And for, for the city it joins the 40 acres that are already owns. The golf course will continue to pay taxes on this property and be responsible for all improvements on this land as they feel is required. We can't see the long term of what will happen, but history tells us that land values will continue to increase. If the golf course does fail and decide to stop operations, the city has a property that can be joined to the A.D. Penner Park for a huge green space or alternately can sell off to investors for development. Today my hope is the golf course remain a viable operation within the city of Steinbeck for generations to come. Thank you. Further discussion, Councillor Swagster. Well, thank you, Mr. Mayor. Based on the comments we've just heard, it sounds like we've got a steal of a deal here. We better go ahead and buy this land before someone else gets it. You know, what, uh, what the comments here remind me of, reminds me of an iceberg. And what's interesting about icebergs, if you observe them in the water, uh, there's 90% of the iceberg below the water and only 10% that's above. And so we've heard the 10%. Sounds very interesting. You know, there's some land that we can get and we have a budget for land purchases and we can stop buying downtown and just sock it all into the golf course. So let's take a look at some of the 90%. Let's take a look at the history in the last year plus of a history of one closed door meeting after another where this has all been done behind the back room negotiations. And so let's, let's take a look. Just over a year ago, as uh, Councillor Fair briefly alluded to but left out some details, the uh, golf course had approached the city in a private closed meeting and requested a grant. And the grant request was for exactly $500,000. And the reason that was given is that the golf course, the, there are some significant financial challenges and this grant would assist the golf course in, in terms of remaining solvent and, uh, and, 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 and helping with the bottom line and, uh, and helping to stabilize. Uh, council ultimately denied that particular request. Uh, we then have a subsequent closed meeting where we have the golf course representatives come back before us and make another presentation. And now the proposal is that the city will purchase land for exactly $500,000, the exact same amount as the grant request. There's no appraisal that the city does in this land, even though we normally get land appraised, normally we would go about that approach. The number obviously comes from the grant request. So we don't get the money from the grant request, so now we're gonna repackage this as a land deal. But this isn't any land deal, because the deal is that the golf course gets to keep using the land exactly as they are now. But wait a moment, they will pay a lease agreement. They will pay a lease of $1 per year. So don't worry, we'll make the money back. In 500,000 years, we will get that money back. So that's the deal that's made, $500,000, so that way the golf course can continue operating as the we are now, and the city can't do anything with the land because under the terms of the lease agreement that's going to be approved next if this goes ahead, then things just simply continue on as is. Now, the original arrangement that was made by city council was to give this $500,000 over five years and that's to try to reduce the impact on taxes taxes because you know with our budget being what it is five hundred thousand dollars half a million dollars is actually a lot of money to the city it could have an impact on taxes so try to reduce it to put it over five years well then we have another closed meeting and at that closed meeting we're informed that no actually we're going to pay it off over three years not five years and why is it going to be paid over three years well, it's specifically to avoid having to take out a debenture, in order to avoid having this be considered a debenture and fall under municipal board scrutiny. So that way we get to avoid that scrutiny and that way this, these dollars don't appear, you know, as counted by the municipal board to our total debt. Of course, that means that the annual payment rises from $100,000 to nearly $170,000, but that's a small price to pay for reducing the level of scrutiny that goes toward this particular deal. But that's not all, because then we have another closed meeting. And now we are discussing how we're going to proceed. 
Um, and along the way, myself and other members of council, clearly not a majority because we're here right now, uh, we're saying the whole way through, this has got to go to the public. We need a chance for public input. We need to hear from the public every single step along the way. Nope, 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 nope. I propose a motion at the closed meeting, because that's where we have to, have to propose it, to request that the golf course board appear before council in a public meeting, make a request, and then give it a couple weeks so we can actually get public feedback so that the first time we hear from public feedback perhaps isn't after we make a final decision on this perhaps the public should have the right to hear uh, about uh, about this proposal and have a chance to weigh in that's defeated for three and so here we are at every step along the way the majority of council has voted in such a way to prevent the public from having any public input this is not a land deal. This is being dressed up as that. It is a bailout that is dressed up as a land deal. And I, I, can only, I can also refer to the fact, even the letter that the golf course sent out to its own members makes it pretty clear. It's about the financial bottom line of the golf course. The letter itself refers to maximum debt load and uh, the challenges in terms of operations and then the key line, through this process, we believe we've created an opportunity to significantly improve our financial position. No doubt it does. And I don't begrudge the fact that the golf course is seeking to improve its financial position. Uh, they have every right to request a grant. The reality is though, as city councillors, we have to put the city first. And does it, re does it really make sense for us to take half a million of tax dollars and give it to the golf course so they can continue operating as they are now? That's basically what is happening here. And this, all this here about, you know, we're gonna have this, we'll, we'll be able to, you know, have this strategic land and such. I remind everyone at council that the city controls the zoning. If we're concerned about future zonings of the land, well, then we should keep the zoning as it is right now. So this is not strategically in the best interest of the city. This is not making a good deal on behalf of taxpayers. And this is most certainly not about involving the public at any step along the way. I would have been happy to cite all this a lot sooner, but I have to follow the Municipal Act, which requires us to keep items that are discussed in a closed meeting closed until it comes to a public meeting. Believe me, a number of us tried multiple times along the way to say this should go to the public. Finally, it's public now, but unfortunately, it's too late because the public's not going to have any chance to comment. Thank you. Anyone else is wishing to comment? Councillor Funk. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. You can, uh, you can call the deal whatever you want. It did start as a grant re request, and then it turned into a land deal. And I see it essentially as a bailout, where only the, bene the only benefactors are the golf course and their lender, the credit union. The city, I don't see the city having much benefit in buying this land because we are leasing it back to them for a dollar. This is not a really good, uh, good return on our investment. Usually when we buy properties, we lease them at their fair market value until we have a need or a plan to develop them. We also do not need to own the land in order to control the usage as we, the city, designate zoning. And we also uh, designate the allowable uses for that zoning. I have questions about the purchase price also. I find it interesting that the purchase price is the exact amount of the initial grant request. Uh, also, I don't remember that an appraisal was ever done on this, land, on this property. And in the past, I do remember when the city buys a property, we usually have an appraisal done for a letter of an opinion of value. I feel this puts the city in a very difficult position because we only benefit if the golf course fails. We don't want the golf course to fail. But if we, if we do not give further handouts in years when the golf course does, does not do well, we will forever be blamed and remembered as council closing the golf course. This may, and this, uh, this item might fall under the law of unintended consequences, but there is a restaurant that is also linked to this golf course and may also be affected positively by this deal. This might be perceived as unfair in the, to other business owners as we are using tax dollars to help the golf course out in their financial position. Also, they're, uh, just take a break. The business plan. One, one time we talked about the business plan and uh, a representative from the golf course said that with the cash injection, they hoped that the golf course would outlast their competitors and then they would become successful. Not exactly the business plan I would be looking for if I was investing in, in, a, in a company. 
we have had several closed alert meetings on this issue in the last year. Too many for my liking. And I remember at one meeting, we did ask for representatives from the golf course to be invited to make a presentation at a public council meeting. And that would allow the public to provide us with some feedback on this issue. But to our disappointment, that was defeated four to three. So that brings us to this point right now. This is the first time the public is hearing about this deal, and we will vote on it tonight. I feel we're leaving them out in the cold. Thank you. Further discussion? Councillor Penner. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Here's the thing. The fact of the matter is, the golf course is already sitting on 40 acres of city-owned land that it only pays a dollar a year to lease, essentially meaning the city is already giving them an operating grant for what the fair market value would be to rent or sell that land to someone else. But the reason this doesn't go through the normal grants process is because land is listed as an asset, so what is essentially an operating grant lies beneath the radar as is. I believe that to support this, this motion, it would, also, it would be grossly unfair to all the other important nonprofit organizations who regularly request grants from the city but are turned down. I imagine many of these organizations and businesses would jump at the chance for the city to purchase their properties and lease them for a dollar a year. They could avoid the grants process altogether, propose a land deal with the city, and keep taxpayers in the dark until it is too late. And finally, is $500,000 really going to change the financial viability of the golf course long term, or is this just a temporary fix and then the city will receive another request for money in another five to ten years? For these reasons and more, I will not support the motion. Thank you. Further discussion? Councillor Penner. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. <clears throat> the purchase of 40 acres from the Steinbach Fly and Golf Course makes good sense. This council has prided itself on making decisions through the lens of value and benefit to Steinbach citizens. So to that discussion, here are some reasons that support this purchase. Number one, this is an important investment in our community. Purchase of the land for $500,000 over three years will allow the city to assist a valuable recreation asset in our city. The golf course has proved itself an organization that brings valuable economic activity and dollars to our city. In fact, you could say that some visitors to our city are drawn solely by our golf course and often stay for the rest of our amenities. Like our Mennonite Heritage Village, our soccer park, our pool, and our many attractions in Steinbach, the course is one piece of many entertainment options that help attract visitors and put dollars back in the economy. Indeed, many charitable and business organizations rely on the club for their fundraising efforts and company events. In addition, in a recent letter to the club, the Steinbach Chamber of Commerce expressed their endorsement of the value the Fly-In Golf Course brings to our community. The course is membership owned, but open to the public, very similar to the structure that has worked so well for our successful Pistons organization. Number two, this is affordable. Over the years, the Flying Golf Course has managed to run their organization with minimal public funds, raising a large percentage of needed investment through private donations. This shows great public support for the club, and private investment continues to support their organization. The club is working hard to create a viable enterprise and continues to look for ways to support growth and sustainability in the current market. The purchase of the 40 acres is fiscally attractive, with the actual appraisal of the land coming in much higher than our offer. If not landlocked, this same parcel would be valued at over $1 million. Under this agreement, the city will lease the 40 acre portion to the course for $1 a year to match the remaining term of the existing lease of the original 40 acres, which would be approximately 60 years. Number three, this is a win-win situation. There is something to be gained for both the city and the flying golf course. Much needed funds will allow the course to remain viable for years to come. With this purchase, the city can not only support the efforts of this valuable recreation facility, but in a scenario where one day the course may close, 
the city will have acquired an additional 40 acres of valuable land in the heart of the city. The acquisition of this property will allow the city to retain control of this green space in a calculated and unified manner that aligns with its strategic visions, vision for parks and designated green space in Steinbach's official community plan. It's a win-win for everyone. Thank you. Further discussion? Councilor Spikstra. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. These are all very interesting comments, and uh, it's really too bad that uh, we weren't delivering these comments in a context where the public maybe had a chance to provide feedback. If there's great public support for this, if this is such a great deal for the city, you don't really see the problem with giving the public an opportunity to, uh, to comment. Uh, the, the, com the, the talking points that are being recited here don't sound quite as good when you look at the history of closed meetings behind this, where you have vote after vote to keep it closed, to change the number of years this is being done over to avoid the municipal board's scrutiny, and then to avoid to deliberately defeat a motion to have the golf course make a presentation. All of that doesn't look, and then of course, adding the fact this is the exact amount of the grant request we were asked for, all of that doesn't look as impressive when you put, look at the stuff under the water. Further discussion? <coughs> Councilor Fair. Uh, in, yes, in, in, in closing, I would, I would assume. Anyone else? In closing, please. Okay, yes, Mr. Mayor. I, th I think that uh, there's much has been said here about behind closed door meetings. Every time that we've negotiated a deal on any piece of property in the city, anywhere, it has always been behind closed doors. We never discuss deals until we make them because it's just not prudent to do so. So to, I, I will defend uh, discussing land deals uh, because you simply cannot put it out there because you're going to have you're going to have competitive uh, uh, things happening and stuff like that. I, I also want to remind us that we have, on several occasions, in the last several years, we have made significant investments in the city in, in infrastructure. That really, what we, what once we paid, we handed it over those assets to the province. This is going to be our asset. This is not going to be handed over to anybody else. This is a, an asset that the city is going to retain, and it will always become worth more money. We're not going to go and be paying uh, paying a, a, you know, a million dollars and, and handing over the asset to the province. I think this is a good deal for the city. Okay. Thank you. Council, I appreciate all your comments, and obviously there is some passion around it. I think, Councilor Swagster, you must have had a lot of coffee today because you've been really going at it. I don't drink coffee. Uh, maybe you should start. <laughs> Uh, I'm not going to speak much just because I can't, but I, the reality is is that uh, uh, this is uh, a deal that uh, is a land deal, very specifically, uh, that has been negotiated like every other land deal. The reality is is that we have uh, a win-win scenario here, one where the golf course can continue to thrive and, and have some certainty, and two, that where we as a city can acquire 40 acres at a reasonable cost and have an investment in the long-term strategy uh, and for the long-term strategy of the city. So I'll vote in favor of it. All those in favor? Opposed? Carried. Thank you. I'm really sorry I can't speak more here. 8B, uh, Steinbeck Fly and Golf Course Land Lease. And this is on page, oh, sorry, you don't have a page. It was an, in, in addition to your package. Mr. Workington. Uh, as mentioned uh, at uh, the initial introduction, uh, the uh, document as far as the memorandum of land, of land lease uh, is attached uh, to the package. Uh, it is uh, related to the uh, authoriz authorization to purchase the parcel, just approved by Council. Uh, recommendation is that Council also approve this lease of land. Thank you. How would Council like to proceed? Move to approve. Thank you. Second by Councilor Fair. Any discussion? No discussion. Anything further? Anything? Councilor Swagstra. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. One dollar a year. Uh, Council, you sure know how to get a good deal on behalf of taxpayers. That's some impressive negotiating on behalf of the city. We're going to get one dollar a year. I'll vote against. <laughs> Thank you. Further discussion? Anything closing? Uh, just that um, it's always a good idea to um, debate these matters in a thoughtful and respectful manner. Thank you. Call for the question. All those in favor? Opposed? Sorry. <laughs> Councillor Penner is thinking about it. No. <laughs> Thank you. It's, it's carried. I wasn't thinking. Thank you. Distracted by the other Councillor Penner. <laughs> All right.
Thank you, Council. Uh, we'll now move to 8C, that's Home Street North. Uh, we do have some information that was added to here. Mr. Warkentine, uh, can you just review this? This is something we requested from you. Uh, yes, this is a, a report, uh, Mr. Mayor, members of Council, to follow up on the uh, initial uh, letter of concern uh, that uh, was provided to Council at the beginning of 2016, which was also followed up by a petition from uh, many of the residents on Home Street North and Steinbach, uh, indicating their concerns with uh, water on the street and the buildup of uh, ice on the street during freeze and thaw con conditions during uh, uh, the weather that typically we have uh, in, uh, in spring and early winter. Um, with respect to the drainage swale on that uh, particular street, um, administration has looked at the matter. Uh, when, uh, once we were uh, advised of, uh, of the concerns, uh, the city did review, and uh, as a result, administration has uh, taken uh, additional measures to both uh, monitor uh, and provide maintenance to the, to the, uh, to the road uh, in order to, uh, to deal with the concerns of the neighborhood. Um, while it is not uh, a perfect solution, it is uh, the best uh, that is possible under the circumstances. Uh, management also reviewed the configuration of the swale, uh, the street and the area to determine if there were any reasonable alternatives to address uh, the neighborhood concerns uh, of the overall design of the drainage swale. Um, generally, the, uh, the area was developed in the 60s, uh, with the city having annexed that land uh, at about that time as well. Uh, in uh, the mid-90s, uh, that particular street and the drainage swale uh, in question uh, was reviewed uh, by administration with uh, the current configuration designed and uh, installed at that point. Um, with respect to uh, the uh, alternative options that uh, were suggested by the uh, petitioners uh, as far as a, uh, a piped crossing with uh, amendments to uh, the street and the surrounding area to, uh, uh, as an alternative, uh, that option was reviewed at that time as well uh, due to the significant changes to the street, uh, the infrastructure and uh, the impact on the neighboring properties uh, with respect to the elevation changes. Uh, it was not seen as a viable option uh, under the circumstances and it was not pursued. Uh, nevertheless, uh, administration looked at that particular option again uh, over uh, the last year uh, and uh, taking into consideration the previous review and again confirmed that with respect to the overall changes that uh, would be required to implement both uh, a piped crossing and uh, a bridge option uh, as an alternative uh, would be extremely costly uh, with uh, estimated costs of construction uh, being in the neighborhood of a half a million dollars um, and also um, the impact of uh, some particular properties that would likely have to be purchased in order to affect the, uh, the required works uh, would uh, make the cost of uh, that kind of configuration uh, unreasonable. Uh, as a result, uh, just wanted to confirm with Council uh, that administration continues to uh, monitor and maintain the roadway uh, as has already been the case uh, and uh, uh, if there is an option to, uh, to reconstruct or reconfigure the drain uh, and, uh, and crossing uh, that uh, perhaps it could be considered in uh, uh, the relatively distant future uh, when uh, that street might be uh, a candidate for a reconstruction project. All right. So just to paraphrase what, what you said, basically what you're saying is this is something that we inherited from Hanover when we took over that area. Uh, it's designed the way it is. We wouldn't design it that way now, but it is how it is. And to correct it would be over a million dollars to correct. Is that correct? That's pretty, pretty close. All right. Thank you. Council uh, questions. Councillor Funk. To you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, so in uh, paragraph two, you talk about the city monitor and maintaining the area more frequently. With the, uh, with the snow and ice that we've received, is that, is that all going at this moment? It is. Thank you for the discussion. Thank you for the report, Mr. Workentine. Uh, there's no action, I don't see any action being taken or it may be taken in the future. Uh, what I would suggest though is that uh, this information uh, in the appropriate form would be relayed to the uh, landowners that express concern or sign the petition and that they would understand clearly the dollar value it would cost to correct it 
and the increased monitoring that we are doing. Thank you. All right. Correct me if I'm wrong, administration, but we are now entering into 9F. Is that correct? That is correct. Thank you. Page 66. Page 66, there is a motion there. You've all had a chance to review the uh, interim operating budget. Mr. Workentine, anything to add to the interim operating budget? Oh, sorry. Um, uh, no, this, uh, other than uh, this is an annual uh, request for resolution, uh, and uh, what uh, the interim operating budget approval does is uh, allows the city to conduct its uh, financial affairs up until such point as the uh, regular financial plan and budget is approved formally by council. Uh, recommend Council approve the resolution as provided on page 66. Thank you. Council, how would you like to proceed? Move Council, to approve. Move to approve. Second by Councillor Penner. Any discussions? You explained it well. Thank you. Anything further from Council? All those in favor? Sorry, I'm fading here. <clears throat> uh, just to clarify. Yes. I, if I could interrupt, I do Nine have, E. Uh, Nine one. E. One correction, uh, yes, 9E I also figured requires so. Council's attention. Okay. All right, 9E, that's page 65. I need, uh, uh, I need the recommend, there's a recommendation to approve the 2017 business tax cancellations. Can I have a mover, please? Councillor Swagstra, moved by Councillor Siemens. Any discussion? Nope. All those in favor? Carried. All right, we'll move to 9G. Uh, RBC borrowing on page 967 is a motion uh, that you've had a chance to review. Can I have a, a motion? Can someone move that, please? Councillor Swagster, moved by Councillor Siemens. Any discussions? All, all those in favor? Carried. Thank you. Any questions of council? Seeing none, we'll move to the correspondence and petitions. We have uh, correspondence from Mr. Uh, Clausen on, on Main Street. Uh, this is on page, this is on page 68. Um, it's very nice that he paid his fine. Mr. Workentine, just a question in regards to uh, the drainage along Main Street when that patio does go in. Is that monitored and is that accommodated? Or did, I, I see a picture here, obviously, that it wasn't, but, or at least at that moment it wasn't, but is that looked at regularly or is that, is that designed adequately? Uh, to my knowledge, the, uh, the picture doesn't lie. Uh, however, uh, to my understanding, uh, generally that uh, the state of Main Street at that location is not, in fact, like that. Um, I would expect that the uh, particular day where there was an accumulation of leaves uh, may have blocked the catch basin. So, but and, that is uh, monitored. But it is monitored. Thank you. Council, yes. C uh, Council, sir. I'd like to make a recommendation that we do put handicap parking in that, uh, it, just adjacent to that, because uh, uh, so often you, uh, uh, you, I've lived with a wheelchair most of my life, and you park somewhere, and you, it's particular if you're working nearby, very nice if somebody would, uh, uh, if you'd be able to park right next door, so. So I'm hearing you're recommending that administration examines yes. putting putting uh, yeah. handicap parking along Main Street in the public space? Yes. All right, does council uh, have any thoughts on that? This is asking administration to examine it, not to do it. Councillor Penner. Um, well, I uh, understand the concerns that Councillor Fair has faced. I. I don't feel that this is an appropriate uh, use of administration's time right now uh, in the fact that uh, we have no designated handicap parking on Main Street specifically, and if we did, there would be issues with loading and unloading as well. So it's actually safer to have it close to the building as possible, off of Main Street. Okay, thank you. Any further discussion? 
becomes a fair. That, that is all very, very good. The only thing is, like a lot of times what happens is when you park in a parking lot, uh, and I've seen this happen because my granddaughter drives and she's, she's dependent on being able to get in and outside of a van. And so you, you put parking there and say no parking within six feet or eight feet, whatever it is. So often she gets there, she can't get in her van because somebody is parked nearby. On a sidewalk like this, you, that never happens because nobody parks beside you. So I, I would like, I would still like us to see uh, us putting some parking stalls on Main Street, off the sidewalk, where there is nobody going to park beside you, and you're going to feel safe. All right. So uh, it sounds like we're going down the pathway of you're making a motion to have administration look at this. Yes, I am. All right. Is there a seconder, please? I want to clarify, if you don't mind. Okay. So you're talking about a broader. Uh, policy in terms of, is it handy, handicap parking, is that the correct term? Is it along Main Street and parallel parking spots? Not just necessarily specific, Mr. Specifically, Mr. This would be a good start. Okay. All right, is there a second here? Okay, Councilor Panner seconds that. Thank you. Further discussion? I just, I would like to, I would like to see uh, us going down the road where we're gonna provide some parking on Main Street. So that, uh, because it is very frustrating. When you, when you drive somewhere and you go back to your vehicle and you can't get in. Yeah. Thank you, Councillor uh, Penner you. first and then Councillor Smith. I support the motion. I mean, this is not a urgent no, issue. I'm not, I'm not saying in two weeks we need to have a report. Mm -hmm. But on the radar is something we should consider. I think that makes sense. It's challenging to park on Main Street as it is. So it would make sense to me to Thank do you. that. Thank you. For the discussion, Council uh, Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I, I obviously I get the intent of the motion. I'm a little concerned that this is a little bit reactionary here in terms of you know we have one letter, and the letter is simply saying could we use this area for handicap parking in the winter, and, and and it's 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 one sort of part of a letter. And along Main Street we have parallel parking, and I'm not aware of too many places that where you'd have you know where you'd have handicap or accessible parking. In the, in the parallel parking section. Normally that would be in the private business parking lot and it would be closest to the, the entrance. So th this sounds unusual. I'm not even sure, I'm not sure what we're asking the administration to study. Like we're looking, are we, maybe Mr. Maybe someone can clarify, we're we looking at, at having a, a handi handicap or accessibility, ex accessibility parking along the Main Street parallel parking section. I'm not even sure how that would work. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I we would probably need to be at, at a near an intersection. All right, so what I'm hearing that's is... That's why I'm not, I'm not doing the investigation. I'm asking somebody else to do that right so. Okay. Does that clarify? It does. As much as I appreciate the intent, I'm going to vote against because I think what will happen is we'll get a report saying that it's not feasible and then we'll, we'll vote against it and administration will spend a lot of time on a report that is as well-intentioned as it is. I'm already... Con it seems pretty clear that it's not feasible. Further discussion? <laughs> Anything in closing? No, I'm, I'm just blown away, but that's okay. All right, thank you. Council, obviously uh, this is something uh, that is brought up, uh, this is a piece of the letter, but I think it's an important uh, to, to look at how we can be as accessible as possible as a city. Asking administration to examine this over time I think is appropriate. Uh, many of us haven't experienced uh, a life of, of trying to get places and have uh, accessibility uh, made, made better for us. And I think it's, uh, it's okay for us as a city to ask this question and get more information before we, uh, we shut it down completely. Call for the question. All those in favor? Opposed? Carried. Thank you. All right. Uh, we have 11B. We have a letter from Marianne Pachtes on page 70. Mr. Workentine, any discussion? Any thoughts on this? Have we looked at Henry Street in the past? Uh, I can tell or advise Council that uh, Henry Street uh, as a public road allowance is a standard 60 feet wide, as are most of the streets within Steinbeck. Uh, the actual road surface itself is also standard width at 29 feet, so it's not unusual in comparison to other uh, residential streets in Steinbeck. Um, if road widening is uh, a consideration that uh, council is uh, interested in pursuing. Obviously, that would need uh, intensive uh, and extensive evaluation uh, to uh, look at what the implications and costs would be. Okay, thank you. Any 
Take, yes, Councillor Penner. Uh, yes, um, I myself have uh, wondered why it's so tight uh, when you do go down that street and have noticed exactly what um, Ms. Dace has talked about um, uh, with the, the width. I understand <coughs> that is the standard width, but somehow, uh, because perhaps of the hospital effect, this does feel very uncomfortable when you go down there. I realize it would be costly to widen the street or to, to um, do any large um, infrastructure changes. But I think we should um, look at this certainly at some point because uh, of the level of traffic and the, and the hospital will only increase. So uh, this might be a perfect uh, scenario one day where it becomes a one-way street. I don't know. But what I do know is that it is uncomfortable and it is, um, as she has exactly said, uh, quite treacherous, especially in winter. Thank you. Further discussion? Councillor Funk. Thank you, through you, Mr. Mayor. I would like to uh, also say that I think I can to totally see this being a one-way street one day, maybe, or possibly this could be tabled until we have a plan to rebuild the street. At that point, we could maybe make it a few feet wider and alleviate the problem. Thank you. Further discussion? Obviously, here we're, we're, we're hearing that uh, we recognize that it is a tight area. We also recognize that it'll be costly to widen the street. Uh, I think we'll take this as information for now, and as we move forward, we'll, we'll go from there. Thank you. Uh, well, next we have a letter from Rachel Friesen. I know Ms. Friesen, Ms. Friesen is here. She has waited patiently. Uh, she has not asked to speak. Uh, normally, we don't allow, we don't normally allow that. But uh, obviously, Council, you uh, see clearly here that uh, uh, this is a request uh, to expand uh, the, minimum, the maximum allowable uh, spaces when it comes to childcare spaces in specific areas. Mr. Warkentine, can you uh, comment on this, please? Uh, yes, with respect to the request, uh, the uh, City of Steinbeck zoning bylaw uh, does permit uh, home daycares uh, in the RSF zone, uh, which is the zoning of uh, Ms. Friesen's property. Uh, however, it only permits uh, home daycares with less than eight children. Uh, larger daycares uh, within the city of Steinbeck are permitted. Uh, I believe they are, I can't remember the term uh, exactly. However, that particular category of daycare operation uh, does permit between 8 and 12 children. Uh, however, that particular use is not a permitted use within the RSF zone. So there's no, Mr. Worgeny, so there's no option for us to give a uh, conditional use on that. It is actually just not permitted. Is that correct? Uh, not under the current provisions of the city's zoning bylaw. Okay, thank you. Uh, Councillor Penner, you have a question? Yes, uh, I guess I'm wondering what's the rationale for that because it's not. I mean, there's extensive screening process, for example, for somebody who wants to open a, a child care uh, facility, I guess I'll call it. So if early child care coordinator for Southeast Manitoba has approved her for 12 spaces, since that's the norm, what rationale is there for the city's just arbitrary, it's going to be less than eight? or? All right. Uh, well, just to be clear, we don't uh, create our zoning bylaw arbitrarily. We go through an extensive process. But, Mr. Warkentine, can you can you uh, comment? Uh, I uh, I don't have the uh, the rationale as to why the categories were determined uh, with the limits as they were, uh, but I presume that at the time the zoning bylaw was established, that those were the limits that uh, would have been related to whatever provincial licensing was in place at the time. Uh, but with respect to uh, why uh, particularly the, uh, uh, the daycares of eight or more children are not permitted in the RSF zone, uh, my understanding would be that it was not uh, a requirement that, uh, that was being sought at that time. Okay. Thank you, Councillor Fair, and then Councillor Penner. Uh, yes, Mr. Mayor. I, I wonder if it would be possible when we review our zoning by law to consider maybe changing that. If that is the direction of council, it could be. Thank you, Councillor Penner. I would like that to 
be an option. I am a mother who is just coming out of having to have childcare, and it's very difficult to uh, find good childcare for a kid. Most mothers, or numerous mothers, want that home-based daycare versus a more formal daycare. Um, and I see personally see no issue. If she's approved, or not just necessarily her. If someone's approved for 12 spaces, why are zoning? Maybe it's just outdated, so I'd like us to review that because um, I'm assuming this isn't this the only person who's probably grappling. Thank you. Further, dis further discussion? Councillor Petter. Am, am I to understand, and this is through you to administration, that even if we wanted to approve this, we could not because it's not allowed in our zoning bylaw? Correct. It is not listed as a permitted use within the current zoning bylaw. Thank you. All right. All right, Council, we do have a our zoning uh, review that will take place over the next year or so. This may be one of those that we want to look at, whether it probably get, whether it gets changed from a, a, a not permitted to a conditional use or something like that. We may we want to look at that, but uh, this time we can't do anything about it. Obviously, when we go through that review, we'll... we'll uh, that to be flagged if possible. Yeah, very good. Okay. Thank you. Uh, no, at this time now you're not. But uh, right now, the, the clearly, what, I, what uh, we have no option but to say eight is the minimum or the maximum, and so until the rules are changed, then we can go from there. Councillor, uh, Mr. Wardenty. Uh, just to clarify, seven is the maximum. Seven. Okay. Thank you. All right. All right, Council. We have 11D. We have the the on page 72. We have the. Uh, a request from Crime Stoppers. We will take that as information. We have 11E. We have Agape House Declaration Request. Uh, Council, there is an event tomorrow. Uh, I will be asking the Deputy Mayor to possibly attend, if at all possible. Not possible, I'm sorry. All right. Is there anyone else wishing, uh, able to attend tomorrow night uh, at 6.30 uh, on, my on my behalf? in the K.R. Barkman Park. Yeah. Half an hour. We can talk later, yeah. Very good. Thank you, Councillor Frank. Unless you wish me much ill, I will not be going. <laughs> All right, 11F, the Navy uh, League of Canada, Dawson request. We'll take that as information. We have the St. Ratford Conservation District minutes. Take that as information. 11E, we have the Jacob Library minutes. Any questions? Take that as information. There's no other business. I'll ask for a motion to adjourn, please. Councillor Penner, second by Councillor Funk. Any, all those in favor? Carried.